Today, um, I really didn't know what we're going to do. Well, I think I know what we're going to talk about. I, I do a little while ago. <laughs> uh, exactly where we're going to start at in the Bible, I don't know just yet. I want to start with um, talking about the fact that on yesterday, uh, a group of us from Integrity went up to the Wyoming border. Yes, and we went up there, and, and, and uh, for the first time in eons, I didn't have to drive. I had some volunteer drivers, and I got to sit in the back seat and look at my wife and realize who she was. Hey, baby, I ain't seen you in a while. <laughs> but we had a good trip up and a good trip back and an amazing trip while we were there. We went up there to... Um, paint that border. We've already been up to the northern border, Idaho, we went out to the western border with Nevada, and we wanted to go up to Wyoming and do our part with the body of Christ, so decreeing the word of the Lord, amen? amen. Calling America back to its covenant roots, amen? amen. And so we went out yesterday and we had a good time. I mean, really good time. It's amazing to sense the presence of God and know that you're doing something bigger than what you are. Yes. I don't know where we got off in the Bible thinking that everything is just about us. Mm -hmm. that, that, that we come to church and it's all about me and making me feel good. And the preacher better preach something I want to hear. And the choir better sing my song. And they better let me do the lead. You know, as I sing my song, you know, and they better have my flavor of coffee when I get there, and, and you know my donut, and, and you know it's all about us. But you know, the, the scripture says, "Bless the Lord, O my soul." Amen. Not it's not just about Him blessing me, and uh, we went up there to be a part of what God is doing. We believe that angels are are on assignment. And that God is doing a great move, a great reset. You may have heard that before. It's about a reset. But we believe that God is going to pull the wool over their eyes to let them know that there's a reset going on. But it ain't the one that they were looking for. Amen. Amen. So we went up there to do that. Today, um, we're going to talk about um, reversing the curse. We're going to talk about reversing the curse. The curse, amen. amen. Uh, or we're gonna, or another way of putting it, we're gonna talk about rewriting the decree. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Rewriting the decree. Now I wanna, I wanna uh, tell you something, and, and I, like I said, I just wasn't sure where we're gonna start. And uh, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter four. Uh, that's not where the, the main scripture I had wrote down in the beginning, but that's where we're gonna start at. Second Corinthians okay. chapter four. Okay. Do you know that you we have been talking here for the longest about getting in alignment with God? Yes. Amen? Amen? We have talked multiple times about the fact that when we pray, we are not praying to convince God to do what we want God to do. Right. In fact, if we did that, then that would make us God and not him. I don't know how you feel about this, but I personally think that God knows better than I do. Amen. I personally believe that he's, his plan is better than my plan. Mm -hmm. Even when I have a good plan, he's got a better plan. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, Kaden, I, I have a pretty good plan, Kaden, but most of the time, well, all the time, he has a better plan. Amen? Amen. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We're going to go through a few scriptures, if you don't mind. Uh, it says, We, having the same spirit of faith, we, having the same spirit of faith, listen, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Notice it says, as I believe, right? Therefore, 
have I spoken. So he's talking here about, about, about speaking from a point of faith. In other words, what your faith is in, what you're believing in. That's what he's talking about here. He's talking about speaking forth that what you are believing for. How do you know that there's a lot of power in the words that we speak? Yeah. We can speak ourselves into trouble. Yeah. We can speak ourselves into problems. We can speak ourselves into depression. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. We can speak. We can be having a great day, and all of a sudden we run into somebody who's a, a, a negative Nancy who will talk us out of the joy that we just had. Yes. And instead of saying the, the joyful, exciting things that we were believing in the beginning, we'll pick up that negative attitude. Mm -hmm. And instead going from a place of joy, we will start feeling depressed. Mm -hmm. In fact, the truth is, a lot of our ailments come from the way we think. Oh, no, that's 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 a lot of our... Uh, uh, what did they say? You, you ever heard this conversation? You, we watching TV because it, it is probably never happened in your own life. You're watching TV and somebody oh, yeah. has had a a, uh, uh, a bad time, like gun smoke. Uh, Doc will come up there and somebody got shot and 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 Doc will do what he can do and they say, Doc, are they gonna make it? And they say, Doc will say, Well, I don't know. It's it's up to them how bad they want to fight. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. That's what you say. In other words, if they want to live, he said they got a chance of pulling through this. Mm -hmm. But if they start thinking, I just want to die, then they're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they're giving up. And so uh, we, we got to know what it is we're believing. In other words, we need to believe what God is saying, and then we need to start speaking yeah. what God is saying. That's right. Amen? That's, right. that's what he's saying. He says, that which I believe, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm speaking. Now, I know, no matter what you're talking about, there are always going to be people who run off on the deep end with anything. So notice what I'm saying. I'm saying we, we want to start speaking what God is saying. First, we need to start believing what God is saying. But then we also speak what God is saying. Amen? That's why you can hear me say all the time, we need to stop listening to them, them uh, prophets of Baal that we see on TV and speaking what they're speaking and start speaking what God is speaking. And that's what we did when we went up to the board. We, we, we began to speak what God was speaking because that's what we're believing for. Amen? We're, we're believing for a reset, but not the kind of reset that the prophets of Baal are talking about. Whose report will you believe? Amen? So it said, I believe, therefore have I spoken. Now, notice it says that that's, that's what was written. Okay, let, me, let me read to you again. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13, it said, for uh, um, we have the same spirit of faith, listen, according as it was written. Mm -hmm. So where was it written at? It was written in Psalm 116, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Psalm 116, verse 10. The Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. Mm -hmm. Psalm 116, verse 10, it says, I believe Therefore have I spoken. He says, I was greatly afflicted. But see, notice he's still saying, I'm, I'm, I spoke what I believe, not what I'm feeling. He says, I was afflicted, but, I, but I'm, 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 I believe something better, so I'm speaking something better. Okay? So, so say, every now and then, there's going to be some afflictions that take place in your body. And so you can acknowledge the fact that you're afflicted, but you need to start speaking the fact that you're believing for your healing. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can acknowledge that weeping may endure for a night, yes. but you're believing for joy that's coming in the morning. Yes. Hello? Yes. You're not just talking about the fact that there's some weeping going on, yes. you're believing for the joy. Right? And so when we went up to the border, that's what we was doing. We was making decrees for what we're believing to take place. Amen? What we're believing to take place. And so we, we, we went up there, and that's what we was doing. It's called uh, 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 
commanding the forward. <laughs> okay, there's all over the country people are going around and they're they're driving their borders and they're going to their state buildings and capitals and and, and so forth and they are uh, decreeing or speaking forth that which was the original intent for their states and for this country. Amen. That's why commanding the forward or is it's not forward forward march. No, it's the forward. I mean, the beginning of the book. You're in the beginning and tell you what the book's about. About? Okay, that's the foreword. And so we're, we're, we're painting the borders with the presence of God and we're commanding the foreword. What does that mean? About what was originally stated for the country. About what was originally stated for the state. Oh man, I'm going to let that thing home. Because see, I told you, all 50 states in the preamble talked about God. Yes. And being in allegiance with God. Yes. Somewhere down the line, we forgot the foreword. No. We're trying to change the book without authority to change the book. Well, Because the book has a foreword telling you what's happening. Come on. And so what we've done over, the, over a, a period of time is that we try to change or anybody remember that word change? Somebody was talking about change. Anyway, yeah. uh, they're, they're trying to change the foreword of the country. Yeah. And I want you to understand that Satan wants to change the foreword of your life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, this, this is why I like teaching, because I want you to understand these are principles. Don't yeah. just get the fact on that subject. These are principles. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Satan was a liar from the beginning. Yeah. He's still a liar, yes. and he's going to continue to lie. Yeah. He wants to get you to believe the lie. Why? Because what you believe, you're going to start speaking. That's the seed that you're going to be yeah. sowing for your life, yeah. and that's the crop you're going to have. Yes. He wants to work change in your life. Change that you shouldn't believe in. Right. <laughs> he wants to work change in your life that you should not believe. Amen. And so uh, uh, what, we are, what we believe is that God is a covenant keeping God. You, you, you still got your Bible, right? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. See, we, we still believe that God is a covenant keeping God. He is not a God who changes his mind. Okay? That's not his habit. He, he, he keeps his word. When he makes a covenant, although all men be alive, let God be true. Hello? Though all men be alive, let God be true. See, people are looking and say, well, why are you believing all this crazy stuff? We don't deserve anything. Well, that's the nature of the gospel. Yes. Ain't that the nature of the gospel? That's the whole story. That we don't get what we deserve. I keep on going. We, we think it only applies in certain spots. Deuteronomy chapter 4, you ready? Let's look at verse 31. It says, for the Lord thy God, look, is a merciful God. Hmm? He's merciful everywhere but for country. No, you know, he ain't got no mercy for no country. All right? You know, as people of the gospel... We're always talking about the grace of God. We're always talking about the mercy of God. Until somebody in the church messes up. Well, okay. well, okay. You know, well. then there's no mercy and there's no grace. None. None. You know, we, we, the, the preacher stands up and preaches for 50 years about the mercy and the grace of God. People get saved, people get drugged, come out of drugs, come out of this, come out of that, and everybody's cheering the preacher on, but then one day the preacher messes up. Wow. And all of a sudden, yeah. off with his head. <laughs> off with his head. Yeah. You know, it's like we, we, we eat our own. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But we, 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 see, we don't understand this thing about the mercy and the grace of God, it's not just a select thing. No. Okay? Even the most wicked person you can think of, if they repent, yes. the mercy of God applies to them too. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. So it says, for the Lord, uh, for the Lord that God is a merciful God, look, it says, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget look, the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. 
Israel was saved multiple times yes, because of the name of the Lord, yes. not because of their behavior, right. Right. not because they were good. In fact, he told them that. He said, you think I chose you because you were so good? He said, uh-huh. Uh -huh. So you were some stubborn, hard-headed people. Come on, God. No, that he did. He says, I remember my covenant with your forefathers. Come on, God. And so when we went to the border, that's what we was, we was trying to bring up the covenant that was made with our forefathers here in America. Because we believe that God established America and that America chose God. Yes. You can look at everything about us and tell that's what happened. Yes. And so that's what we're, we're reminding. That's the foreword that we are bringing forward. Yeah. We're reminding America of the foreword. We're reminding ourselves of the foreword. And we're like, we're like Moses. When Moses said to God, he says, God, don't wipe them out because your, your name's on the line here. Yes, right. Come on now. Okay. Your name's on the line. Don't wipe them out. You can't do that. Don't do that. So that's what we're doing. And see, this ain't nothing new. Isn't that what uh, Abraham did with Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. Right? Isn't that what he did? Yeah. He, he didn't say, when God says, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't say, oh, no, they, they don't deserve it. He knew they deserved it. Mm -hmm. But he, 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 he appealed to the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. God, God all the way down to 10. Now listen, if he had got God all the way down to 1, Sodom and Gomorrah would still be there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, still would be. Yeah. So he said, look, we're, we're, uh, he's a covenant keeping God. So what we've been trying to do uh, over the last uh, little bit is just remind God of the covenant that our forefathers made with him. Mm -hmm. we, when we got up there on the board, what we did is we read things like um, the, the prayer that Robert Hunt did in 1607 mm -hmm. when they actually planted a cross and that cross is still there. And he said, you know, Lord, that we, we dedicate these lands as a land uh, for you, for the spread of the gospel, and that from this land, the gospel will go out to the nations. That's what we read yep. from the board. Mm -hmm. So we weren't making up something. We were just commanding the forward. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We were speaking the forward, yeah. the beginning of the book. Yeah. This is why we were established. This is what you need to do. I repeat, listen, there are things that you know God has promised you in your own personal life. Mm -hmm. That's the foreword, the plan, or the book, the story of your life. Yeah. Yeah. What we do is listen to how we feel and what other people say about us. Mm -hmm. And we come into agreement with them and say what they're saying. It's like what I told you when I was a little boy. When I was a little boy, we used to ride bicycles. We used to call them banana bikes. Remember banana bikes? Yeah. Yeah. Long banana seat. Yeah. And then sometimes you had a big sissy bar in the back. <laughs> what? Yep. And and we had banana bikes. We used to go out on the road and we'd be riding. Back in the uh, back in the old days, owning a bike was a good thing. I don't know if I go riding around today, but anyway, yeah. uh, we used to ride on them service lanes. We call them frontage roads here. Yeah. On them service lanes, but it never failed. At least once a day, somebody would come driving down the road stick their head out the window and speak a word directed at me. What were they trying to do? They were trying to command my forward. They were trying to change the plan that God had to me. They, they would call me something that God didn't call me. They would try to name me something that my mama didn't name me. That's right. Okay? But I rejected it. Amen. Amen. I rejected it. I said, You can't be talking to me. You got me mistaken with somebody else. Okay? Because that ain't who I am. And so what we've, we've been doing is trying to command the forward to remind America of who we are. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy's always trying to change who you are. Yeah. What's he doing right now? Trying to change men and women. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And women and the men. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. You know? And, and so that's what they're doing. We're, we're fighting against this and no, that ain't who we are. And see, if, like I said, if you get to that that part, and people are talking about, well, we don't deserve the grace of the Lord. Nobody does. 
All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ain't that in your Bible? There's another place. If you read Psalm 130, let's go to Psalm 130, by the way. I want to read it to you. Psalm 130. I want us to get some understanding. Nobody deserves anything that great. Okay? Psalm 130. Verse 1. It says, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. So we think that can, only, that can only happen for a person. That can happen for a nation. Remember Nineveh? Yeah. Yeah. Remember Nineveh? Yeah. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. Nineveh go, uh, Jonah finally gets there. He's walking through town telling people, 40 days, y'all are done. 40 days, there's going to be some fireworks. Y'all are toast. Right? And he was right. Because God told him that. Told him that. But then the Bible says they repented. They called a national uh, fast. They said not even the animals could eat. Look, oh, oh y'all ready? It's going to hurt. Y'all ready? The Ninevites had more faith in God than Christians do. And they weren't evil people. Listen, they believed that God could sustain them in a fast. Let us tell Christians that go on a fast. Oh, God. Oh, we start making excuses. Oh, I can't go without eating. Oh, no. I can't. No. I can't go without eating. The Ninevites had more faith in God than we do. And they all went to fasting, and God saw them repenting. And so he didn't destroy them. Now they got in trouble later. <laughs> but he, he didn't destroy them. Why? Because they repented. And so I believe there's enough Christians who have repented on behalf of America and who are believing God and that remnant that are seeking God, that God is hearing. And, you know, America shall be saved. Yes. Come on down. Come on down. So we are speaking that from the borders, you know, painting the borders, you know, uh, uh, coming to an agreement with God. Remember we read in Daniel. I keep going back to this because it's so important. Daniel saw in the books that the 70 years were almost up. The Bible says he, he set his heart to seek the Lord about what God had said. What was he doing? Commanding the forward. About what God has said was going to happen to that nation. The Bible says Gabriel showed up and Gabriel told him why he came. Yeah. He said, I'm here because of your words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm here because of your words. Yeah. You spoke it, I'm here. So as we went to these borders and we're speaking them, we're loosening up our angelic hosts yeah. to do things that we can't do. Yeah. To war against the demonic powers and so forth that are over our land. So, because this is where we live. Okay? We, we, we didn't go down to Tennessee because we don't live there. We live here. Okay? Hopefully, the people in Tennessee took care of their borders. Okay? And so, that's what we did. Listen, y'all. Y'all need to walk the border of your property. You need to walk in your house. You need to get to your doors and anoint your doors so that no wickedness can come to your doors, to your windows, and so forth. That no weapon formed against you will prosper. Come on now. You need to give God permission to loose the angelic host around your house and around your stuff. Amen? Amen. See, I keep on going. So we need to decree and speak forth what God says. Okay? What God says. And listen, I don't care if nobody agrees with you. You're not decreeing what they're saying. Come on, God. Yeah. Yeah. You're decreeing what God says. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, people will rob your dreams. They'll rob your security. 
They'll tell you all kinds of stuff that they feel. And you say, okay, that's how you feel fine. But as for me and my house, yes. yeah. as for me and my house, I, I don't care. When you do what you got to do, dude, all right? I guess I, I have had limited conversations lately with people because I don't see what they see. I'm not praying, come Lord Jesus right away because I want to get out of here. I've read what the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises, yes. as some men count slackness, yes. but he's long suffering towards us. Why? Not willing that any should perish. That's right. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not ready to run out and leave all these people to go to hell. Come on now. Come on now. Say that. Why? Because God isn't. That's right. Amen. And when God says it's over with, child, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay? When, when, when God says, pull the curtain, I'm gone. Okay? I'm gone. But I ain't, I'm not gone one minute before then. He said, occupy till I come. Anyway, what he said? And the Bible says, who, when the Lord comes, whom shall he find being faithful? Yeah. Come on now. I want to be found being faithful. Come on now. Right. Yeah. Okay? I want to be found saying what God is saying. Yeah. I, I want to be found saying what everybody else is saying. Yes, so that's what we did. We went to command the forward. We wanted to remind America of, at least from our point of view, what our book says. Mm -hmm. What our story says. Mm -hmm. Not where we are. Because mm -hmm. see, a lot of times you could be off your story. I remember as a little boy, there's another thing I, I remember, and this only happened on, you know, once or twice because I knew better. But uh, like when I, I would be doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. my mom and dad, they just look at me and say, you ain't acting like a Henderson. Ooh, yep. so they must have switched somebody in the hospital because a Henderson oh. wouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, no, you you ain't no you ain't acting like who you are. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. So so as a as a Christian, I want to act like who I am. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I want to say what I'm supposed to be saying. Yeah. And so okay. now I want to show you something. You ready? Mm -hmm. Go to Esther. That's what I thought was going to start at. But mm -hmm. let's go to Esther. Because I told you what we want to do is reverse the curse. Yes. So in Esther chapter 8, Esther is the only book of the Bible that doesn't mention God. So you think, man, that sure has got to be an awful book. Man, that, Esther is one deep book. Oh, there is so much in Esther that is so, uh, I mean, talk about uh, prime rib. The book of Esther is prime rib. I mean, it is prime rib. It is good, my word, and juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh. So, it's, you ever read the book of Esther? Yes. Everybody read the book of Esther? Yes. Sir. Okay. I want to say that because I'm tempted to start at verse 1, but I can't. <laughs> verse, I mean, uh, chapter 8. So, let me tell you as you read through, you read about Esther. Okay? Esther finds herself as the queen. Her primary vehicle for getting her to being the queen was she was fine. Okay. Yep. Oh, I know. What a pig I am, huh? A male chauvinist pig smoking just like a man. Isn't that what happened? Yeah. Esther got in the, into the palace because she was beautiful. So, ladies, stop trying to unbeautify yourself. <laughs> because God can you get you in the places because you're beautiful. Okay? But she was more than just beautiful because there were some other beautiful girls. There was a spirit about her that gave her favor. Okay? See, you can be beautiful physically and be a devil. Yes. Okay? But she had the outward stuff and the inward stuff. Don't say hello. Hallelujah. Okay. She had both. And God used that to get her in as queen. Mm -hmm. So you gotta know that because a lot of a lot of churches 
will try to make women not be beautiful outside. They'll call that works of the flesh and stuff and try to try to make you look bad and dress bad and look bad. No, you can look nice, just don't look like you belong to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Both. I, I say to everybody, you don't have to try to look homely, but you don't want to look like, you know, you belong, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's some modesty to what you, what you look. That's important to say, because if you haven't met them, there are Christians who will punch you out and try to beat you down and use that against you. Don't, don't, don't believe that stuff, okay? They get all crazy. And so, Esther found herself in the, in the, in the uh, palace. While she's in there, her uncle, well, Mordecai, mm -hmm. finds out that there's an assassination attempt on the king. He gets word in the Esther. Esther tells the king they check it out and find out that it's true, right? Mm -hmm. They kill the two guys who's trying to kill the king. Mm -hmm. But they don't remember Mordecai, no, do nothing for Mordecai. Mordecai didn't have a fit about it. Right. Lesson number two. Uh -huh. Don't have a fit when it doesn't appear that you got acknowledged for something that you did. Mm -hmm. God may have a plan down the road. Yes, sir. And that's what happened here. Um, down the road. When the two guys got killed, they, they promoted this guy named Haman. Mm -hmm. So Haman became uh, like the... Uh, head of the DOJ in the kingdom. You know. Yeah. He, he became one of the high-ranking officials in the administration. So, with the job, all the people were supposed to bow down to him. This fellow named Mordecai, he had this crazy idea that he had no king but Jesus. So he refused to bow down to Haman. Haman got the whole world by the hand, but every time he sees this guy, Mordecai, who will not bow down to him, oh, it just eats him up. Yeah. It just eats him up. He is so mad. So he starts making plans to destroy Mordecai. Mm -hmm. Then he finds out that Mordecai is a Jew. So not only is he going to destroy Mordecai, he's going to destroy Mordecai and his people. So Mordecai, excuse me, Haman who's a, the head of the DOJ, mm -hmm. he decides to use his position yep. to kill his political enemies. So he's figuring out a way to kill not only Mordecai, but all his people. Yeah. He's he going to wipe them all out. Anybody associated with yeah. Mordecai yeah. is also going to be killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what that's what's happening here. Well, Esther finds out about it. You know, she doesn't know what to do. Okay, sometimes things are so messed up that there isn't any protocol for fixing this problem because it's never happened before. I would like to suggest to you that a couple of years ago, in the middle of the night, when something happened that everybody's trying to make you believe it actually happened, when those of us who, who got brains realized that it's impossible that it happened, mm -hmm. that there was a whole bunch of people who know that it happened, mm -hmm. but did not know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. Because it had never happened before. Actually, it has happened once before. It, so they didn't know what to do, so everybody became cowards. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to even see the evidence. Mm -hmm. None. People say they lost the case. No, they didn't. No. Nobody would even look at the evidence. Oh, wow. And there was plenty of it. Oh, and still is. Yeah. So in this case, Esther says, if I go before the king, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Mordecai says, you better go because you don't un understand that this is the reason you're there. Mm -hmm. So she goes in there to take care of it. Mm -hmm. She has this um, idea. It's actually a pretty good idea. I want to tell you something. Listen carefully. God will use the arrogance of your enemy 
against him yeah. to trap him. Uh -huh. By the way, that is Bible. Mm -hmm. It talks about the wicked being captured in their own wickedness. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, remember um, uh, when uh, Mordecai, no, remember I told you that uh, they didn't reward Mordecai for saving the king's life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one night, he, the king's sleeping, but he can't sleep. He gets up. He starts reading in the books. He finds a story about Mordecai saving his life. He says, what has been done to Mordecai? They said nothing. He says, I got to do something for this brother. Coincidentally, Haman comes walking in. He says to, to Haman, he says, Haman, Haman, tell me something, tell me something. What should I do to the man that I want to bless? What things can I do? do for the man that I want to do something special for. I want to honor this man. Haman think, who else can the king possibly want to honor but me? <laughs> See, y'all may not remember this, but after everything went down and people went to jail and stuff like that, I said, the enemy is going to overplay his hand. Because I thought God was going to stop it all. But when he didn't, I said, the enemy is going to overplay his hand. And so since 2020, you've seen the enemy come out of the closet like you never dreamed. I'm telling you, I knew they were evil. I didn't think they were this evil. I knew there was corruption. I did not know it went this deep. I didn't know it went this deep. I'm telling you. I, I, you've heard me say this at least 10 times. I'll say it again. If my son got arrested by the FBI and I believe he was innocent, I would be hiring me a lawyer right now. Because, boy, the, 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 the wickedness and corruption. It's just been off the charts. Yes. We would have never known this if it had got stopped right then. And so the enemy had been overplaying his hand like crazy. Uh, uh, the stuff that's coming across the border, uh, the human trafficking, the drugs that are coming across and so forth. Uh, the, the people, yeah, people getting paid and people turning their heads the other way. Uh, just unbelievable stuff. Uh, should I drop a couple more things in there? Because you, you don't know this. Uh, this this fire that took place in Lahaina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Something about this is okay. something about this is not adding up for me. Come on now. And and then and then uh, um, that guy that y'all believe was born in in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. His personal chef drowning in eight feet of water. No safety. There's some, some, mm -mm, something's messed up about this. And so wickedness is being seen in levels like we never seen before. And so, um, and as you watch it taking place, you know that the only solution is God's going to have to do something miraculous. That, that, that's the only solution. And so Haman, with his, his egotistical way, thinks it's about him. So he comes up with all these great ideas, and it turns out he had to do it for the guy that he hated. He had to take Mordecai and run through the streets with Mordecai on the king's horses and the king's robes, saying bow the knee and all this kind of stuff. He had to do it for his enemy. That's it. What do I keep telling you this year? I keep telling you this year there's going to be a recovery. Have you ever said that before? That, that this year, there's going to be divine recovery. That um, the wicked are going to be found out. And the, and the stuff that they plan on other people, it's all going to be flipped. Uh, write it down. Write it down. Because you just, Pastor, you ain't got no evidence. Okay, all right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, I'm just telling you now so you remember me, okay? So, so you want to say, uh, wow, this is new. No, he, he told you, okay? So 
Haman, after he gets done with this, he runs home and tells everybody what just happened. Sure did. Isn't, let me show you something. Go to chapter 6 of Esther. Well, let me show you something. See, y'all think the only people who can prophesy are prophets. Well, Look at verse 13 of chapter 6. Uh -huh. It says in Haman, <laughs> well, let's go back to verse 12. It says, And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his home, mourning and having his head covered. He was so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. A lot of folk won't get embarrassed here real quick. Mm -hmm. Write it down. Verse 13 says, And Haman told Zarese, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had happened befallen him. Then said his wise men, and Zarese, his wife, unto him, Listen, if Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou hast begun to fall, mm -hmm. thou shall not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. Mm -hmm. Haman was in charge. How can this be? They're prophesying right now. Yep. They don't know it. That you're going to die. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall before the God you're trying to kill. Yep. Come on now. Verse 14. It says, And while they were yet talking with him, came the king chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman into the banquet that Esther had prepared. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm not going to read verse 7. And verse 7, uh, Esther points him out. Right? He points them out. Tells the king what Haman has been up to. Haman doesn't know at the moment, I think, that Esther is a Jew. He don't know that. He's actually called a, a decree to kill all the Jews. He don't know that in doing so, he's talking about killing the king's wife. So, Esther says this evil person who's going to do this is, is Haman. Haman gets, uh, oh, 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 stop. This was, <laughs> there's, a, there's a servant standing by when Esther tells the truth. Haman's face turns white, right? This servant guy says, a, 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 a king, not only is he talking about killing your wife, he got a gallows outside that he built to kill Mordecai with. Yeah. What happened? Wow. The people start turning on each other. Mm -hmm. His oh, his man. own servants are turning on him now, mm -hmm. ratting him out. What have we been praying? That the enemy, yes. they all turn on each other yes. and they all start ratting each other yes. out. Yes. Come on now. That's what I believe, so that's why I have been speaking. Amen. I don't know what anybody else is speaking, right. but that's why I have been Amen. speaking. Okay? Amen. So everything goes down. Now, go to verse 7, chapter 8. Mm -hmm. I told you, it, yeah. Esther is just too, deep, too deep. It's just too juicy. I, I just want to preach the whole thing, but I, I can't. Go to chapter 8, look at verse 7. Yes. It says, Then the king of Hazareth, Haman's dead by now, all right? Mm -hmm. It says, Then the king of Hazareth said unto Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai, the Jew, mm -hmm. Behold, I have given Esther, look, the house of Haman. Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman. What was supposed to happen? Haman thought he had set it all up the way he was going to take everything that belonged to the Jews. Mm -hmm. What happened was the Jews got what belonged to Haman. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what you're about to see. And him, they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid hands upon the Jews. So he, he built a gallows to hang Mordecai. He himself got hung on it. Today, they're building and setting traps to, to catch people. They're going to get caught in their own trap. Their arrogance is going to be that downfall. Okay? Verse 8, listen. He says, write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you. In the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is a writing in the king's name yes. and seal with the king's ring mm -hmm. may be no man reverse. Yes. Okay, right. stop. Let me translate that for you. More, excuse me, Haman made a decree that all the Jews were going to be killed. Yes. The king 
says to the queen, you make a decree, you rewrite the decree. You write a decree that gives you protection from the decree that he already wrote. Multiple decrees have gone out across America that want to change America into something that it was never designed to be. What we're doing now is rewriting the decree, yes. proclaiming yes. what America is and was intended to be, and what we believe in God's seal has planned for America. Yes. They're saying change that you can believe in, mm -hmm. and we said, yes, we can, yes, we can. I'm saying no. Mm -hmm. We're not changing from the plan that God has for us. <coughs> We are not changing from the plan of God for America. Come on now. Come on okay? Now. I don't care what anybody else wants to change us to. We're not changing to that. Why? Because the four word says what we are. Amen. Come on. Anybody ever heard of this thing called a Liberty Bell? The Liberty Bell has some writing on it. The Liberty Bell has written on it, proclaiming liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. What a neat little saying. Where did it come from? It came from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10. It came from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 10, as you're turning to find that. Leviticus Chapter 25, verse, we're going to read verse 9 and 10. So that's what we're decreeing. We're not trying to change it to something that we think it ought to be. We're decreeing what God has already established it as. We're standing in opposition to those who want to change it. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. See, that's part of the reason why church don't want to fight. So we just like let everything go. We, oh, we don't want to fight. I'm going to live and never fight. No. We got to learn to fight. You ready? Let's check uh, verse 9. Verse 9 says, Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. Listen, in the day of atonement. That's right. Jubilee in the day of atonement. Shall you shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all the land? Look at verse 10. And you shall hollow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man upon his possessions, and you shall return every man unto his family. So when they made the liberty bell, listen, and every time they struck it, that's the sound that went out throughout the land. Amen. That scripture went out through the land. Amen. A scripture that talks about freedom, liberty, does not talk about bondage. Okay. Does not talk about being slaves to anybody, okay. including the government. Right. Including the government. Yeah. That's why I keep telling you, we are a republic, not even a democracy. Right. Right. Why? Because democracy is nothing but mob rule. Okay? So let me read this one definition to you. Have you heard terms, people talk about um, leaving capitalism and going to socialism? Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you heard me say many times that socialism, Marxism, yeah. communism, it's all the same stuff. Yeah. You know, a little bit of, you know, it's all the same stuff. This morning, when I was sitting there thinking about it, I looked up um, the word socialism. And from the Oxford uh, Language Dictionary, it has the word socialism. Then in parentheses, it says, in Marxist theory, in Marxist theory, is a transition, it's a, tr a transitional social state between the overthrow of capitalism and the realization of communism. Socialism in Marxist theory 
is a transitional social state between the overthrow of capitalism, which is what we are, and the realization of communism. Socialism is the bridge in between the two. Socialism is the first state of a worldwide transition to communism. That is not Rush Limbaugh talking. That is not Sean Hannity. That's the Oxford Dictionary of Language. So all these fancy words, they're trying to take us away from freedom to slavery. You wonder where we are right this moment? Right this moment? We're an oligarchy. An oligarchy is where a small group of people have, uh, have control over a country. It's where a small group of people have, a con have control over a people. What happened in 2020 wasn't democracy in action. It was an oligarchy in action. Come on, come on. They would say, well, why don't you call them this and call them that? I have never called them this, and I ain't gonna call them that. I call them the occupant of the black house. I mean, white house. <laughs> I don't call them that. Because I don't believe we the people made that decision. Yeah. Okay, and I'm I'm convinced of that. So what we're doing today and yesterday and gonna continue to do is command the forward that this nation was established for God's purpose. It was not disturbed, uh, established for us to be slaves to anybody on any level in any way, shape, or form, to have freedom of religion, to have freedom of conscience, to, to, to worship God according to the dictates of your heart, and nobody's gonna tell me I can or cannot go to church. Nobody's gonna tell me what I can do when I'm in church, and you can't do it when I'm in church. Remember in California? They, they finally uh, 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 relinquished and said, you can go to church, but you can't sing or worship. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You could go to church, but you couldn't sing. You couldn't worship God in church. No, that's not what's gonna happen here. So we are fighting for the soul of a nation. And so we're doing our part in our prayers, fighting for the soul of a nation. Now, some people, simply because of, 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 of their preferences, can't see what's really happening. Right. That's fine. Right. It's just not going to stop me from seeing. Right. Amen? Amen. So, so I want you to continue to, to, to speak the word of God. I want you to continue to speak what um, what God is doing. Well, um, speak the things you know to be true, whether they are politically correct or not. And don't sweat it. Because stuff's going to happen. It's going to happen. We, um, it's going to happen. Ain't no way around it. But don't run Remember what he told Joshua? He says, uh, be of good courage. Mm -hmm. That's all I can tell you. Be of good courage. Because we're in a warfare. We're going to keep speaking what God is saying. And we are not going to run. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing we definitely not going to do. We are not going to run. We're going to stand and fight until Jesus comes and says it's over. When he says it's over, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. But until then, we're going to fight. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we are, we are decreeing to reverse the curse. Amen? Amen. Reverse the curse. So Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that you are you still have a remnant who are not, are not ashamed of the gospel. You still have a remnant, Lord, who are not so caught up into preferences and what we like and what where it used to be that we can't see the way it is right now. That we can't see what's actually happening right now. And Father, you have not called us to lay down and let anybody walk all over us and to, to, to destroy what you have called us to be. You called us to be light and salt. Yes. We're not going to turn our lights off. Mm -hmm. We're not going to become unsalty mm -hmm. so that we can blend in with society. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold our ground. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep on fighting 
to our country. We're going to keep on fighting to our neighborhoods. We, 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 we are not going to be a, afraid to go outside at night because of the lawlessness that, that's running about. We're going to uh, decree uh, righteous judgment. We're going to uh, de decree that there's going to be uh, uh, good people in authority, and people who, who will stand up for goodness, who will, who will not call uh, evil good and good evil. That's our decree, Lord. That's where we stand. We don't care who it is, where it came from. We will stand against the works of the devil. And we don't make excuses. We ain't apologizing. We will stand for righteousness. And Father, that's what we decree, that all over this land, people will rise up and fight. They will not sit back and just say, well, I, I, it's none of my business. It is our business. It is our business. So we will fight. Father, we thank you so much. And Father, I pray for everyone here, Lord, that our minds will be made up. I pray, Lord, that we would, would see the enemy even in our own lives. And not just lay down and say, well, that's just the way it's got to be. It ain't got to be like that. It, it, that is not the way it's got to be. So, Father, we, we speak life even in our own particular circumstances. We speak life in our own bodies. This person can claim this and say this and say that, but Lord, we know that you have the final say. You have the final say. So we will say what you're saying. We choose to believe your report in every aspect of our lives. Lord, these bodies, in some of our cases, these bodies are just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We still decree your word over our bodies. We are healed by your stripes. We are more than conquerors to him that loves us. We are the head and not the tail. We decree your word over our bodies, over our life, over our attitudes. We choose to believe you instead of circumstances. We function by your grace. So we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.